afternoon, everyone. Um, the effects, as we all know, of Hurricane Sandy were enormous, uh, but they were also highly personal. Uh, I think it's fair to say every single person the storm uh, affected experienced his or her own personal Sandy. And now we're doing everything we can to help everyone recover and rebuild. But for many, the losses were truly heartbreaking. Uh, last October 29th, Sandy it took the life of uh, George Dresch and that of his 13-year-old daughter, Angela, and nearly took the life of George's wife and Angela's mother, Pat, who is standing here with me. Uh, they were in their longtime home in Tottenville uh, when the powerful storm surge slammed into the house and took the house right off its foundation, toppling it and destroying it. Pat was knocked unconscious, but miraculously, she survived. And since that day, she's been living in the rectory of a neighborhood church where she has been helping give religious instruction to the students at its parochial school. The church, I think, is very aptly named. It's called Our Lady Help of Christians. Today, we're using federal Sandy relief funds to acquire her own old property. And with the proceeds from the sale, Pat intends to buy a new home in Tottenville. In fact, I'm happy to say that she's already had a pre-contract agreement on that purchase. So, uh, Pat, just let me say the way uh, your neighbors and friends stood by you is wonderful. We will continue to be there for you. Um, I know this is not easy. You are great to volunteer to do this. Um, I don't think any of us can ever feel your pain. And as I said to you before, we're walking in. Hopefully, we don't have to. But um, we're here to help each other, and I think you, as an example, uh, can really help others deal with tragedy and try to build a, a new life, and that's really all we can do. Uh, Pat, you should know, her uh, house is the first to be acquired as part of our NYC Build It Back program, we're calling it. She is one of close to 24,000 New Yorkers, including more than 5,000 Staten Islanders, who signed up for NYC Build It Back assistance since we launched this program. Uh, we expect thousands more to be helped in the weeks ahead, and we want to make sure help gets to everyone who is eligible as quickly as possible. Um, let me stress that if you are a homeowner or a renter whose primary residence in our city was damaged by Sandy, or if you're a landlord whose, lord whose property was damaged by the storm, you can still register for NYC Build It Back help until October 31st. And needless to say, if you want more information, just go to 311nyc.gov, uh, and you can even link directly from there to NYC Build It Back. Uh, since the summer, our housing recovery specialists at six centers that we've set up have been meeting with Build It Back customers. They've been explaining the options to help those New Yorkers return to safe, sustainable homes. Those options include help with repairs, rebuilding, or reimbursement for the out-of-pocket expenses that they're eligible to claim. And we expect that those are the options the vast majority of people will choose. Also, as in Pat's case, there's acquisition with the idea that the city will work with the community to redevelop such properties in a more resilient way or sell them. And I did want to thank Governor Cuomo and his team for working with us to develop an acquisition program that facilitates resilient redevelopment where it makes sense. Uh, before turning things over to our other speakers, let me just stress two additional points. First, the Build It Back initiative is extensive and ambitious. Uh, Brad, uh, Brad, where are you? There you are. Now, as our Director of Housing Recovery Operations, uh, Catherine Mallon, who's, Mallon, who's not with us today, um, is also helping us build it back. And our Commissioner of Housing and Preservation Development, Ruth Ann Viznauskowitz, Viznauskus, um, deserve enormous thanks. I told you I mangled the name. <laughs> deserve enormous thanks for their work. Uh, and so do all who are working to help people as part of the Build It Back program, including Ariel Pena, who was the first person in the program to work with Mrs. Dresch. Where are you? There you are. Uh, but this is just the latest step that we're taking in Sandy Recovery. Over the past 11 months, the city has already begun or completed more than a billion dollars worth of work uh, of Sandy response and recovery work, and that includes reopening schools, public housing, hospitals. Uh, works also included a rapid repairs program, which you remember, that restored heat and power to 54,000 New Yorkers and got them back in their homes. Uh, it was an amazing program. Uh, Cass Holloway and everybody else, and particularly Catherine, worked on this. And uh, I don't think anybody has ever provided a service like that where we just walked in 
and get you going. And that's the best thing we can do. Temporary housing is not the answer for most people. They want to go back to their homes. And that was a program that got an awful lot of them back. Um, we have a program that has done mold uh, remediation in more than 1,600 homes. Uh, we've reopened all of the city's beaches. We did it by Memorial Day weekend, as we had promised. We are continuing to reconstruct damaged boardwalks all along our coast. And we are moving ahead with the Army Corps of Engineers on beach replenishment. Uh, they keep pumping and pumping and pumping, and you really can see it when you, if you go down to the beaches. Uh, we have provided more than 650 businesses with approximately $20 million in loans and grants through a partnership with private partners and the Mayor's Fund to advance New York City. And we've also developed a comprehensive $20 billion plan to make New York City more resilient in the future. Second, concerning the $648 million in federal Sandy Relief Fund that's, uh, funds that are available for this program, NYC Build It Back. It is part of the first installment in federal relief funding. The city is now available, able to draw on and start to receive. Hundreds of millions of dollars are also committed to helping businesses recover uh, for resiliency programs and for infrastructure repairs and other costs related to Sandy recovery. Uh, the slow process in repairing, rebuilding, or acquiring homes is because of uh, what you could easily call burdensome processes that the federal laws and regulations require. Uh, the federal government has chosen to have these rules and regulations. They think they're needed, and that's not for us to, uh, at this point, go and criticize them. It's to work within those, uh, and we're doing everything we can to comply with every single one of these things. And things um, we also have to worry about now are if the federal government uh, continues to shut down, uh, things are going to slow to a crawl. Uh, we've warned about that earlier, and uh, we hope that they come to an agreement and get the pipeline open. Uh, unfortunately, such a protracted shutdown um, is uh, uh, something that we have to deal with until Washington comes to its senses. And earlier this year, Congress approved and President Obama signed into law relief for Pat and thousands of other New Yorkers who are struggling to get their lives back on track. But until we get more of the federal funds that Congress approved, we won't be able to help everyone who needs help. And we're happy to be helping Pat today. She is the first, uh, literally number one, uh, of those. We have 25,000 on the pipeline. Uh, we think as we get the program going now, assuming the federal government turns on the spigot again, you'll start to see this ramp up very quickly. We've got a lot of experience in, uh, by now in, in dealing with the government and with the contractors and with the people in the city. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, uh, we can make a very big difference uh, very quickly. But you have to start with one, and I'm happy to say it is you. That's a feel it first. Um, on that note, let me uh, uh, turn things over to uh, Pat Dresch. Pat? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, everybody. I'd just like to say a few words. If it wasn't for these men standing behind me, Councilman Ignacio, Congressman Grimm, his staff, his staff, my community of Tottenville, my church, the pastor of the church. I don't know where I'd be today. Um, they were wonderful from day one. My close friends, I met a whole lot of new friends. Um, they've pulled me through this. I'm, like you said, I'm still living in the rectory, but I hope to go forward with what I received today, um, maybe in a couple of months from now, moving on to a new house, trying to get back to some normalcy without my family being there. But. I'm going to try. I take small steps, like they've been telling me. That's what we've been doing all along, small steps. And we've gotten to this point so far. And um, I thank everybody. Are you a good cook? Yes, I love cooking. <laughs> all yes. right, well, I'll make a deal in front of everybody. Okay. You cook a good meal, invite me, I'll come for dinner. I won't be mayor. <laughs> with, with all due respect, uh, Mr. Mayor, he's I'm first. first. <laughs> but we, you can, we can have a dinner together. We could do it together. He already asked. <laughs> that doesn't Chicken matter cutlet, around the joint. table as long as there's enough food to go around. Yes, I love to bake. I love cooking. I love entertaining. Yes. I didn't hear wine yet. Wine is the <laughs> Yeah, he's bringing the wine. Oh, yes, Congressman Gordon. Well, she lives well. in a rectory. So <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in a rectory wine. for Sorry. dinner where they haven't been ample quantities of red. And white and red. So, uh, but, uh, I'm happy to be moving on. Um, and I don't know. Okay. Well, you're a real role you. model for everybody else. I don't think there's many people who could stand up and do what you've just done. I try. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it is a great tragedy, and we yeah. can't forget that. But we no. just have to go on and be doing it. So. Thank you. All right. Well, thank, thank you.
The uh, charge to uh, continue Staten Island's recovery certainly starts with the great borough president of Staten Island, Jim Molinaro, who claims he's lost his voice, but when I said, well, you don't have to talk, oh, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have lost the voice, okay? So I'm going to be very, very short. We went through a very horrific occasion here where there was no book to refer to. But thanks to our government, our local government, our state government, they responded in a way that they never responded in any other state. We're back on our way to recovery. And tonight's, today's the first example of that recovery. And we wouldn't be where we were, we are today, if it wasn't for the governor and for the mayor and for what they've done. They've made a very, very horrific situation a lot better than it could have possibly have been. If they could just cut up with my voice now, we'd be in business. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Jimmy, thank you. Um, also with us, somebody that we can always count on to stand up for Staten Island in Washington, Congressman Michael Grimm. Congressman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to, to, to Pat Drash um, for being inspiration for me. I remember being in a room with three other members of Congress uh, when we weren't sure whether we were going to be able to get the relief package or not. And there was an amendment to strip out $16 billion, which is the bulk of what New York City received. And the other members of Congress came to me and said, Michael, you, that's, that's on your plate. Go deal with the leadership and make sure that amendment that's going to strip that money out uh, doesn't see the light of day because we didn't have the votes to defeat it. And before I went, met with Eric Kanner and Speaker Boehner, I said my prayers, one, to give, to, to give me the strength and courage to get this done, but I thought of Pat Dresch. And when I went in and spoke to my leadership, I spoke about Pat Dresch. And that's how she has the courage to rebuild her life, and we need to help her every way we can. And we got that done. So I want to thank her. I want to thank the mayor's office for all that they did and are, are doing. The governor's office has been great. But another very special thank you. This would not have happened today without Vinny Ignizio. And uh, he's, he's been a great partner all the way through. And when I made a promise in the hospital the morning after, when the rain was stopping, I was holding Pat's hand in the hospital, and I made promises that I knew that I had to keep somehow, some way. And Vinny, thank you for helping me keep those promises. So God bless you. Thank you. Well, I don't have to add anything uh, to the introduction of Vinny. This is uh, the South Shore District. It was his district. Uh, I was there with you on the streets that first day. And uh, thank you for everything you've done. Say thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a very emotional day for some of us that went through all of this. And uh, I'm not an emotional man, so for me to be emotional, it's uh, really an emotional day. To see Pat smile, it, it means everything to me. It really does. There are so many people in my community that rallied together and said, we won't let you fall, and they didn't. Uh, people like John Ross, uh, who, who stood by her, and Nick Curran, and, and the mayor, and, and Deputy Mayor Kaz Holloway. Mm -hmm. Deputy Mayor reached out and said, we're going to make sure we do this, and thank you very much for what, taking a personal interest and in making this personal, because that's what this is all about. Uh, you know, we tend to look at numbers, and the numbers from Congress, and the numbers of, uh, of people that we need to help, and we see them... Uh, in that context, but there are so many great people behind those numbers that that these programs that your administration put in have ab absolutely helped. And I'm just really humbled to be play any role in this as possible, and to know that more people are going to be helped uh, throughout. And the fact that we're actually here and that it's a new beginning. This is not about saying um, and talking about yesteryear and the, and the stories that occurred. This is about saying, Pat, this is the beginning. This is a great new beginning, and uh, we're going to continue to be with you and continue to, to love you, but to send the message to all New Yorkers uh, that, that finally we see light at the end of the tunnel and we see uh, new hope that's coming before all of us. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Vinny, thank you. Um, just so you know, the people up here that didn't speak, Kaz Holloway is our Deputy Mayor for Operations, and uh, Brad Gar, Gar is the Director of Housing Recovery Operations, and Ruthann Viznauskas 
is the new HPD commissioner. I miss anybody else? Ah, Assemblyman. <laughs> Sorry. Um, come on, you got, a, you got a chance to speak then. That's it. <laughs> All right, I guess I, guess I earned the, the speaking that? moment. Um, Real, real quickly, uh, the, the congressman hit on a, a good point uh, about Vinny Ignizio, and, and that's where my involvement in this uh, st really started and happened. It wasn't as an assemblyman. It was actually as a staffer to Councilman Ignizio, who made this his number one priority. On, you know, Sandy plus one, he and I set up a table and stood uh, on the corner of where Ms. Dresch live, lived and handed out everything from, from gloves to, to food to, to, you know, God knows what else. Um, he has made this a priority from day one, and, and you, you were the impetus behind all this. So uh, just great job, great job. And for everyone else, you know, this, this really represents number one of many, um, but it's great to see that people can finally start having closure from uh, this horrible tragedy. Thank you. Uh, Congressman Morelli is a new Assembly member, and you're going to hear a lot from him. Uh, let me uh, try to summarize for our Spanish-speaking New Yorkers before we take questions. Estamos empezando el proceso de entrega fondos federales a propietarios cuyas casas fueron afectadas por el huracán Sandy. Si su casa fue dañada o destruida por Sandy, llama al 311 o visite NYC. Hey, y pregunta si clarifica para esta ayuda. La fecha límite para registrarse es el 30 y 1 de octubre. And with that, I'll be happy to take some questions. Yes, miss. 